Welcome back everyone. I'm going to go over the details for the upcoming competition happening on March 19, 2024, which features the Golden Heart Necklace meta. This is not a new item. We have made it in the past, but it is coming back with a new crafting recipe, which features more gold than it used to. I mean, the first time we made Golden Heart Necklaces, you really didn't need that much gold, but this time around, you definitely do need more gold. So I'm going to go over the official details, and then I have a build showcase prepared to give you an idea on how to make a competitive competitive design for this upcoming competition. As always, the official details will be on the Common Ground World Announcements channel and the Gala Games Discord, and you can find a link to the Gala Games Discord in the description of the video. So the competition will begin on March 19th and it will end three days later. Make sure to pay attention to the start time. This should show you the time relevant to your time zone whenever you come and check it out yourself on the Discord. And the meta is to sell golden heart necklaces. Trade time will be 80 seconds and it will cost two gasoline per trade which tends to throw some people off since you are going to need more gas than you usually do to trade everything which means that you got to make sure that your build is balanced enough so where you don't run out of gas the biome is going to be a desert facing east and all three other edges will be a river this can be clearly seen from the starting biome picture that they provided so this is the starting town since it's a desert it will come with an oil seep that is closer to to the west river over here and you do start off with two gold panning sites and uh, ore storage a panner to pick up the gold ore and you also have a forge so you can immediately start making gold which is very convenient because the cash boost for this one is gold i know gold is most people's favorite or i would imagine i mean it's my favorite thing to make so gold usually gives you a lot of cash 4880 for each one that you sell but with the cash boost it'll give you a little more than double that it's going to give you 10,000 for each gold that you sell so you should have no issue at all with getting all of the cash that you are going to need for your design which may be pretty expensive because jewelry does have some expensive buildings in there but really this gold cash boost will help you out a lot so no doubt about it you want to be making gold for this competition to get all the cash that you need so let's look at the rewards you have your standard gala rewards for placing in the top 1200 but this competition is also going to feature an nft reward so if you place in the top 1200 you will receive the hasty steel miller uh, blueprint card and this will increase the movement speed of the worker in the steel mill by a certain percentage depending on the rarity of the nft you got the better you place in the leaderboard the better rarity you will get if you can't manage to place in the top 1200 and you sold at least 100 golden heart necklaces then you will still earn the uncommon version of the nft which provides a five percent movement speed boost which is the lowest rarity but you would still have earned something for at least giving this a shot golden heart necklaces are crafted in the jewelry crafting table and require five silver jump rings one lobster clasp one gold plated heart pendant and six gold jump rings which is the new addition to this craft they are stored in the jewelry store along with all the other jump rings the lobster clasp and also the heart shaped prints the craft time for the golden heart necklace is of 180 seconds and it is important to note that the jewelry crafting table is negatively impacted by dirty so you want to keep it away from any buildings that may cast dirty on it such as forges foundries or forklifts to name some the new nft that released with this competition is called the leprechaun's pot of gold it is a legendary nft and it provides up to a three passive gold ore around it and it also provides a 30 percent craft time boost to all of the jewelry crafting tables and this effect is stackable as of recording this video it also provides that crafting boost to all of the rings made inside the foundry we are not 100 sure if this is intended at the moment it hasn't been confirmed as of recording this video i may write something in the comment section to let you know if it is confirmed or not so just pay attention to that in the comments below but the building is placed in your town and it does not cast any shade has no wages and it does not require a road this came out on friday it was priced at 400 dollars. there was 250 in supply but it has already sold out i believe this one sold out in about five minutes i'm just letting you know so you can know the utility and my thoughts about it my thoughts on this nft is that it is extremely helpful especially if you like doing gold rush because this is just going to
to help jumpstart it because with this nft you're not going to have to worry about making the gold padding sites right at the start since you'll be able to have that three passive gold ore to all of the forges directly next to it so you can have eight forges next to this nft and it will have all the passive gold ore that it needs so you're just going to need to supply wood in order to make the gold now if you happen to have a green forge then you're not even going to need the wood it will just make passive gold you can sell gold for a lot of money right you're just going to need a warehouse in order to store it if you also have the goldy nft this is one of the penner brothers that still provides one passive gold ore to all of your forges no matter where they're at so you can pair that with this pot of gold and it will still work you have the pot of gold casting two passive gold ore in a tile goldy will provide the extra one passive gold ore and it'll still have the three gold ore that it needs to make gold this is a very competitive nft to have in any jewelry related meta so let's take a look at what we have here this is my golden heart necklace build which as you can see there's some buildings that are missing i mean there's some open space i didn't get to fully optimize this build Build, which is cool there's room for improvement but the way it's at right now it works well it is competitive for this competition in case you were wondering i have run it for a couple hours and yeah it's doing just fine so let me tell you what the production rate is this is doing 40 golden heart necklaces per hour it's been running for over seven hours i still have plenty of gasoline i've thrown away so much gasoline but yeah it, it has no issues selling everything that it needs uh everything is fairly well balanced Balanced, maybe not perfectly balanced but balanced enough to where nothing gets jammed and you still have plenty of gasoline there are what five six seven spots that weren't used originally these were wire mills and these were jewelry crafting tables or pottery shops i realized i didn't actually need that many for the production rate that i was trying to make so i left it as this as is right now it's great at 40 per hour i do believe that you could push it to somewhere between 45 maybe even 50 golden heart necklaces per hour and this is without using any nfts at all if you figure it out how to better optimize this even further and that may also require a slightly different design and having more foundries than even i used here i can tell you that this is a very good build for what it's doing so let me scroll through the production monitor here pretty slowly i'm not gonna point out everything but i do believe that the reason it is only hitting at most 40 golden heart necklaces per hour is because of the golden jump rings those are at 240 per hour each golden heart necklace requires six golden jump ring so that's why it only makes 40 and you also need some gold in order to make the golden heart plates yeah the gold plated heart pendants so that's at 43 per hour with the rest of the gold it's making and i suppose i have it set up so where it's only making uh between 40 and 50 sterling silver per hour since i wasn't even gonna try to go past 40 per hour it, it is making 50 sterling silver in case you wanted to find out how to optimize this and get it to 50 per hour it is possible i know it is i just didn't want to spend more time on it and other than that silver jump rings at 210 per hour it's five silver jump rings for each golden heart necklace so that would be enough for 42 per hour so you would also need to improve the silver jump ring production rates if you wanted to push past 40 per hour as for copper 50 copper jump rings that's enough for the 50 lobster class that it is making so that is fine where it's at right there i can see it's definitely possible to push up to 50 per hour i'm going to explain everything going on here starting with copper silver and gold production so you're going to need penner workers from the penner houses or penner bunk houses and they are in charge of picking up the ore from the panning sites and taking it to an ore storage so i have 11 penner bunk houses which comes out to a total of 22 penner workers the penner bunk houses cast two shades so they are casting some shade on this front row of panning sites which slows them down but that is completely fine because we have more panning sites for that reason so there are eight copper panning sites all the way to the right side there are eight 
15 silver penning sites all the way to the left side and in between those two there are 15 gold penning sites. Then there are two ore storages next to the area where all the forges are at so the penners can store the ore there. And in order to make copper, silver, and gold you are also going to need wood in addition to the ore. So that's why I have eight logger houses which are in charge of collecting wood from the tree farms and I have 22 tree farms and they will take the wood directly to the forge that's why no lumber yard is required so you know you don't need to store wood anywhere for this and for the forges there are a total of 31 forges i'm going to show you first the ones making silver they're going to be the ones on the left side so there's going to be 11 forges making silver uh the ones to the left and then these three up top are all making silver and then there's going to be six Six forges making copper there are going to be the ones closer to this or storage and then all other 14 forges here are making the gold i'm probably not going to click through each one but all these other ones are making gold and there are three warehouses around this town which is where the metals get stored most of the metals get stored either right here since they're closest to the forge or over here now i'm going to explain the wires for copper silver and gold this one's an easy explanation so there's a total of seven wire mills one of them is making copper wire then there are four of them making silver wire two over here on the corner and then two right next to the refinery making petroleum farther away and then there is these two making gold wire and i'm going to talk more about the gold wire to gold jump ring process a little later but that is all the ones making the wires which are stored in the warehouse next i'm going to talk about the jump rings for copper silver sterling silver and gold so the jump rings are jewelry so they are stored in the jewelry store which I have four of those. There are a total of 15 jewelry crafting tables and one is making the copper jump rings right here and then there are four of them making silver jump rings and two making gold jump ring. Then we have the foundries which are also making jump ring. For the foundries you are going to need silica in order to make some of these crafts so you are going to need forklifts for this. I do have two forklifts and the forklifts are in charge of picking up silica from the sand mine of which I have three sand mines and the sand mines require two energy that's why they're near the power plants. The forklifts are also in charge of picking up clay lumps which I'll talk about in the next crafting process. The silica is then used to craft some of these crafts and I have a total of 12 foundries. The one right here is making sterling silver. This one doesn't require silica but it requires silver and copper in order to make sterling sterling silver which is one of the requirements in order to make the sterling silver jump ring which is made in these two foundries right here then we got seven of these foundries making the golden jump rings i believe that this is a more efficient way to make gold jump ring because normally whenever you make gold jump ring with the wire mill it actually takes 45 seconds whereas with the foundry it only takes 30 seconds and you're making the gold jump ring you're not making the wire which is then made into the gold jump ring using the jewelry crafting tables and that is actually what i am doing i do have some wire mills making gold wire in order to make gold jump rings which isn't as efficient as i just said you're better off having more foundries and more silica to make the gold jump rings this way because that is more efficient but since i needed a way to make more gold jump rings and i didn't want to change this layout too much that's just what i happened to to make but a more efficient design would stick to having more foundries to make the golden jump rings i just wanted to talk about that in case you were wondering what is a more efficient route to go for i do believe it is mostly using foundries to make the golden jump rings or really even any of the other jump rings but primarily the golden jump rings so that explains the whole jump ring process i do also want to talk a little bit more about the foundry in case you're not aware the foundry does not need a road and it does come with an effect whenever you place the foundry it does provide a 10 percent craft time reduction to all of the forges next to it and this ability does stack multiplicatively so this forge is being affected by these two foundries so the craft time of all of these is actually 20 percent lower 
50. It's not exactly 20%. It takes off 10% and then it takes off another 10%. So it's more like 19% in case you were wondering how that worked. These forges don't have any foundries next to them. So they craft at the regular pace. And there are these forges, which have three foundries touching them. So that's a multiplicative 30% reduction. And say these are 40%, as you can see. And this one would be a 50% because it has five foundries next to it. So that is probably the fastest one here. But I do want you to understand the importance of the foundries and having them next to the forges. This way you can pretty much get by with less forges than you normally would have needed if you weren't using any foundries next to the forges for some reason. And no matter what, you will need to make some foundries because you do need to make sterling silver, which can only be made at the foundry. And the same goes for the sterling silver jump ring. So no matter what, you will need those. In addition, the gold plated heart pendant, which I'll talk about next. All right, enough rambling. Now to talk about the golden heart pendant. So you are going to need a tractor. So I have one tractor to pick up strawberries. So there's one strawberry field and take them to the silo. So there's one silo for that. Preferably the silo is next to the pottery shops and preferably it should be facing the pottery shops. I actually didn't do that, but it's not going to make a difference. So it doesn't really matter. And you are also going to need a clay field. Like I mentioned earlier, the forklift is in charge of picking up the clay lump, taking it to a warehouse. But in the event that the forklift is busy, the pottery shop workers would just pick up the clay lumps themselves. So we do have the, the one clay field here. And since there's a river next to it, it has the three passive water that it needs from the river. And there are three pottery shops. And there's also a nuclear power. This gives the passive energy to the pottery shops and doesn't cast any dirty since the pottery shops are negatively impacted by dirty. That's why you wouldn't want to have a power plant providing the energy because then it would slow them down significantly. So that's the main purpose of the nuclear power. But yeah, there's three pottery shops and they are all crafting the heart shaped print. They have the passive energy. They just quickly need to pick up the strawberries and the clay lumps. And that gives you the heart shaped print, which is then used at the foundries of which there are 12 foundries and two of them are making the gold plated heart pendants. As you can see right here, using the heart shaped print, one copper and two gold to do so. And those are stored in the jewelry store. And the golden heart necklace, well, there's 15 jewelry crafting tables. Six of them are making the golden heart necklace. Preferably, you could have some of these face the jewelry stores. That way they'll pick stuff up quicker. But it might not matter since I have six of them making it. That's plenty for the production rate that I'm making. And then you're also going to need lobster clasp. These two jewelry crafting tables are making the lobster clasp. They'll pick up a silver wire by themselves, a copper jump ring, and a sterling silver jump ring. And those are also stored in a jewelry store. And that should cover all the items required for the golden heart necklace. So then there's the gasoline production. So we have the standard gasoline production with two water pumps, two power plants, the refinery in between them crafting gasoline, refinery to the side crafting petroleum. There is an oil seat providing the passive crude oil for the refinery crafting petroleum, as well as this power plant. If you happen to need to craft energy and don't have the nuclear power built yet, because you could also craft energy using that once that is built. But, you know, the energy is just in place to help you you collect the energy you need to build all the buildings that require it. And the fuel storage is across the refineries or somewhat in between them. Sometimes a little bit of extra petroleum gets in here, but it's fine. You could just auto sell that. As for the trade setup, there are two trade piers because the trade times are fairly high. And like I mentioned, gasoline, it's uh, two gasoline per trade, but there's more than enough gasoline being produced here and quickly enough as well to sell everything that you need to sell. Here's what the auto trade looks like. I have everything on here except strawberries. You don't need to auto sell strawberries and I actually wouldn't recommend it because then it's just going to take away time from selling other stuff as well as gasoline. I do recommend you have petroleum on here just in case and everything should be at an auto trade amount of 10 with the exception of gasoline if you're auto trading that but also the ores. I have those at 30 in the event that the ore storages just happen to get full with ore but the way it's set up that shouldn't be the case. Here's what the build looks like on the visualizer. Total cost is about 30 million. That doesn't include the cost of building the steel mill and the mines required to get the steel needed for the nuclear power. Wages are 56,975 per minute, but you will have no issue paying the wages once you are done.
done and selling golden heart necklaces. You can find the file for this visualizer on my Discord server and an invite link to the Discord server is on the description of the video. No NFTs are required in order to reach this production rate. When it comes to jewelry, there's a lot of NFTs that you could use that would help you improve your production rates. I'm not sure if I can even go through all of them, but I'll go through some of them. Starting with the arcane artifacts, there is the rare and epic arcane earrings and the arcane ring. You can only have four of these placed and well, you'll only have four of the effects active, even if you have more than four of them placed. So if you happen to have four epic arcane earrings placed and one arcane ring, it's only going to provide you the effect of the first four you placed down, or I believe only of the four epic arcane earrings. But what these do is the earrings provide a movement speed bonus to all of the forge workers, and it also reduces the craft time of all of the crafts made in the forge. The epic one is way more intense than the rare one in terms of the percentages, and the ring would provide an increase in capacity of your ore storages and your jewelry stores by 20, and it also makes it so that they don't cast any shade, and it also makes it so that they can be built instantaneously without requiring any cash or materials to build. It kind of turns them into NFT storages in a way whenever you have this place down. Another popular one is a green forge, which acts like the forge, but it doesn't cast any dirty or shade, and it allows you to craft all of the crafts that a forge normally would, but doesn't require any wood to do so, which makes it more efficient. And since it doesn't cast dirty or shade, it lets you get by having this in places that you normally wouldn't have a forge. Artisan Guild is another one that recently came out, and this one provides one passive silver ore and copper ore to all of the buildings next to it. Pot of Gold is the one that came out with this competition, which provides up to three passive gold ore and a 30% craft time reduction to all of the jewelry, basically. And then you've got the Panner Brothers, which consists of Cooper, Sylvester, and Goldie. Each one of those provides one ore to all of the forges, no matter where the forge is placed in the town. And the panners themselves also go and pick up ore from the panning sites. And they also have additional effects if you also have the mama panner on the field or if you have all the other panners, which consists of, well, the mama panner, papa panner, as well as Rose and Lily. But yeah, there's a lot of NFTs out there that could help you with jewelry metas. If you're interested in looking for more, you can check out the Townstar playbook. Links in the description of the video. I do have a tab that talks about all of the nfts and their utilities that's all there is to the build showcase so i hope this is able to help you create a design or improve your current design if you found this helpful or informative please leave a like leave a comment consider subscribing if you haven't done so so you don't miss out on my content check out the link in the description on how you can play common ground world or help support me if you decide to purchase something from the galley game store and as always i appreciate your support and thank you for watching